This is Tom Fox. Welcome to the newest edition in the Compliance Podcast Network, my latest podcast, Compliance and Coronavirus. As the voice of compliance, I wanted to start a podcast which will help bring both clarity and sanity to the field of compliance, the compliance practitioner, and indeed the compliance profession during this worldwide health and healthcare crisis. Taking up a variety of topics as diverse as working from home to sporting events, to the role of the board of directors, to crisis management, to the role of supply chains. We will look at all of these in this podcast. If you have a topic you'd like covered on compliance and coronavirus, please let me know. I'd be happy to do a podcast on it. In this episode, I visit with David Wolf. David is the founder at Audavita Studios. He is a podcast and audiobook producer. He talks about how these tools can be used by corporations and compliance officers for communications coming out of the coronavirus health crisis and economic dislocation. It's a fascinating exploration of new and different ways to communicate compliance. Hello, everyone. Tom Fox back for another episode. Today, I have with me David Wolf. In addition to being my animal namesake, uh, we are also proud members of uh, C-Suite. And David has one of the most, uh, I think, forward-thinking and unique audio companies around. And it's around audiobooks, but that just touches on the wide variety of audio he involved, is involved with. So, David, first of all, with an incredibly long-winded introduction, welcome and thank you for taking the time to visit with me today. Hey, thanks, Tom. Great to be with you. And yes, the fox talking to a wolf, it doesn't get a whole lot better. It doesn't get any better than that. So, um, could you tell us about your podcast and audio book business? So sure, um, I, you know, I, I grew out of the music production business. I'm actually originally a composer producer for radio, TV, and film. So I was a guy that wrote jingles. I did film scores. I worked with documentary filmmakers for the first 40 or so years of my life. And then after that, I just, I, I took a break from what I'll call writing the abstract future music that, you know, uh, someone would use in a commercial or a film or children's programming and, and began to switch, shift my interest in business. And with that, grew a business uh, that in its current form today, it's called Audavita Studios. And and we uh, deliver, most of the product we deliver is, well, it is audio. We do some video. I've got three guys on my team that cut video. So we are, actually are starting to cross into video, but the core of the business is audio production delivered in podcasts and audio books. So we're working with thought leaders. We're working with business professionals. We're working with authors, of course. Um, and on the audiobook side, a lot of them uh, much of our work is recording remotely using uh, platforms like the one you and I are using today called Squadcast to uh, to produce nearly studio quality audio for the audiobook product. And of course, we do the same on the podcast side. So it, it's, what's fascinating, you know, you and I are sitting, uh, not to timestamp this, but I guess I'm going to, you know, there's, there's, there's this thing called COVID. And even before that hit, we were almost entirely building our business uh, remotely. I've had a couple of cases where guys wanted to fly out and work with me face to face. But for the most part, we are recording in 90 minute sessions with authors and um, on the audiobook side with authors all over the world. And then on the podcast side, you know, it depends on the length of the episode, of course. So, so that's a quick on, uh, you know, sort of how to, how we do what we do. I've got a team of about people side is important. I talked a little bit about tech, technology. So I'm really having fun leading a wonderful team of talented people. I've got a core group of about four or five people uh, Erica Yoakum on the operations side, uh, Sean Hedinger heads up our uh, podcast re, uh, recording and production side. Um, Mark Shipman does the project management on the, uh, on the uh, audiobook side. And, and so I, I'm just having fun learning how to be a, a, a good leader, an effective leader amidst, you know, some really talented folks that are good communicators and, and know how to handle clients and work with people collaboratively to get the product done. So, David, one of the things that struck me, I've been able to uh, hear you at a couple of uh, conferences, and we've shared a couple of panels where you've talked about your work, but it struck me that the work you do, the audio you produce, is really missing from the corporate world. And it's missing out because uh, what's missing is utilizing the audio format to deliver information that is required in the corporate world. And what uh, really uh, intrigued me was your uh, offering of your audio uh, 
book package of 10K, 10,000 words, and uh, how uh, you might call that an ebook, or you might call that a smaller book, or you might call that a something book, but you put a package for that from the audio format, and then that's led to other discussions around audio white paper. So I was wondering if, if we could just start with your package offering, if you could describe that, and then we maybe could explore how that communication tool could be used in the corporate world. Oh, absolutely. That's a great question. And thanks for that entree. So um, yeah, at the core, we have a a 10,000 word uh, audiobook project. I'll call it a package, although we do tend to customize a lot of our work. But for the purposes of this, it's $1,595 or about 16 cents a word. Uh, We'll record remotely, uh, edit, do all the post-production and create what uh, would be what you and I would consider an audio book or an audio deliverable. And um, typically uh, in the audiobook space where we're dealing with longer form than that, sometimes, not always, um, you know, we're taking it out to uh, Audible, Amazon, iTunes, and about 35 other uh, uh, online retail channels that include public libraries and university libraries. And, and a lot of, you know, there are a lot of uh, apps outside of the, uh, what I'll call the Amazon ecosystem that we distribute to. So our package includes the recording, the editing, the post-production, the creation of the cover, which needs to be square for audio product in the retail market. And and then also um, the managing of the files and uploading them for distribution for sale online. Now, it, what's fascinating is, is I think um, there's a movement towards towards shorter works. And you sort of uh, telegraph this a little bit in your question. Um, you know, why 10,000 words? I mean, most of the average, I mean, most of the books we're seeing are between, you know, call it 25,000 to 50 or 65,000 words. So, you know, if you if you do the math, these are, you know, four or five, six, eight hour audio books. So I think what's happening and we're seeing this in the podcast space as well is there's a discussion about distributing in shorter, more manageable bites, uh, uh, more manageable bite sized chunks of audio or content in general. Right. So so I think th- we created this to, to be able to um, create an iterative model where you might have a series of white papers or you may have a, a chapters of a book that are, you know, four or five maybe 10,000 words each that we could release uh, in a cadence, something like what we do with podcasting, just to make them easy to metabolize. And, and just, it it goes with the attention span, those trends uh, that you and I are both seeing in the podcast world too. So I hope that that uh, covers some of what you're uh, getting to there. Sure. But the, uh, the other thing that struck me is that this is a completely underused, if not unused tool in the corporate world. So in the corporate world, you might do a a short audio message. You might do a longer audio message. You might do a training that is uh, audio or online. Uh, You might put together a video, but the corporate world is not thinking about this as a delivery mechanism for either intense training for employees that need to be uh, really expertly trained or ongoing communications. And if I could now overlay this with uh, something Jeffrey Hazlett talks about, which is uh, he finds that about 25 to 28 percent of the podcasts consumed in the C-suite podcast network are on iPhones, excuse me, on uh, iWatches. And uh, that seemed to me to be a stunning t- statistic. But if that's correct, the business listener could utilize the same tool, particularly when we can start going back to gyms or at least begin to get outside and walk around. And it, it just seemed like to me, as I said, if not underused, a completely unused tool in the corporate world. Oh, no, and it's so true. You know, the corporate, right, you have more of a consumer uptake on a lot of this stuff, I guess, is what you and I are thinking and talking about here. But the idea that you can completely hypermobilize any content, I mean, that's really what we're talking about. So why wouldn't corporate corporations want to do uh, release audio content or content where you don't have to sit and read and ha- be held, I'll call it captive to a screen or captive to a sheet of paper that you printed and, and be able to just get out and, uh, and do be, be multitasking, be walking your dog, be walking through the neighborhood, be at the gym, be commuting when that starts happening again. Again, we're sitting in the midst of uh, COVID or beginning to, to move through that. So, 
um, all of this stuff is true. Of course, as an audio producer, I've thought about the value of audio and the fact that you're not held captive to visual elements, which means you're free to do other things. And so um, absolutely internal or external communications. And we're having conversations with companies about this uh, right now. Given your professional background uh, coming from the entertainment industry and, and moving over now, uh, is, yeah. is that something or are those types of conversations to our corporations? Have they been open to them? Should they, not should they be that because they should, but do you think they would be if we could present a model to them? Yeah, I think so. And in fact, there's a lot of discussion around dramatizing uh, or illustrating through dramatic, uh, call it radio theater or dramatized uh, radio uh, scenarios. For example, in leadership or conflict re- resolution, I think there are opportunities to what I'll call um, animate these these scenarios rather than just talk about them from an a- academic or theoretical perspective. I think leadership is one area where that can happen. Um, we had a, cl- a pod, uh, sorry, an audiobook client that. Uh, specialized in communications and leadership in the medical industry of all things. This was long before COVID, but she also is an actress and does improvisation. So her book was called Improv to uh, Improv to Improve Your Health. And she was really talking about how medical professionals communicate it, whether it's in the surgical, you know, in the OR or wherever they are. Uh, So I I think that the, the idea of bringing um, ideas to life through audio, which is really kind of in a way what I think you're, uh, at the core of what you're asking there is is profoundly uh, interesting and fascinating because because when you're communicating so much of this is an emotional conversation right so taking it out of a dry theoretical and into a dr- dramatized idea could be very interesting and very effective. Well, David, if uh, anyone wanted uh, more information on uh, the company, the uh, podcast or audio books, where could they go? Sure. Okay, sure. sure. A couple uh, ideas there. So we're, like so many, we're rebuilding our website. It will still be the same domain, audivita.com, A-U-D-I-V-I-T-A.com. Um, you can contact us through there. You can get information about what we do and our team and all of that. Or you can just send an email to me at dwolf, that's like the animal, D-W-O-L-F, at audivita.com. And again, it's, it's like the car, Audi. And then Vita, V-I-T-A dot com. Well, David, this has been a fascinating conversation. We've talked about some really interesting ideas. I hope we can continue this conversation. I love it. Thanks so much for having me, Tom. Great to be with you. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox again. I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode of Compliance and Coronavirus. If you have any questions or you have a topic you would like explored on this podcast, please shoot me an email at tfox at tfoxlaw.com. Also, as a call to action, I would ask if you could to please tell one of your friends about the podcast so we can spread the word out about the newest podcast on the Compliance Podcast Network. Also, if you would leave us a rating on iTunes or a review, it would greatly help get this word out about this most important podcast over the next several months. Thanks again for listening, and I hope you'll join me for our next episode of Compliance and Coronavirus. This podcast is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.